group wants to do it. They were a bit reticent and they said, how can a hospital in India do it? And the hospital in India, healthcare systems in India adopted JCI. And now it's become a standard, it's become a norm. And what is really exciting is that it's not something with just the Apollo hospitals or the Apollo team does it. Across India, it's a standard and there are multiple, there are, I think now almost about 150 or 200 uh, institutions who have done JCI in multiple formats, including home care. So, you know, that, that's the kind of standard which has happened. Telemedicine, again, is, has been pathbreaking. I'm proud to say that it happened within the Apollo team uh, with chairman directing it, Sangeeta and Dr. Ganapati and Vikram just picking up and running with it and saying, we will deliver this standard to the remotest of locations in the world. We can do it, we dare to dream and we will deliver on it. And that's really what the telemedicine team has done. So what next is again about people, about process and bringing technology to see that the process is unfailing because in healthcare, you cannot afford to you know, take a risk. You just can't do anything which will be even a 0.001% uh, of a risk because it's, it's touching lives, it's human lives. And I think the team has shown and today, uh, the certification uh, 1331 2021 has shown that it can be done. And again, it's pathbreaking for the rest of the world. And as leaders, there's a responsibility to be uncompromising in what we do. And I think the journey on quality and on standards shows that we will not compromise in whatever we do. The landscape, the ecosystem is huge. Uh, whether it's telepathology, which again is happening, whether it's teleradiology, we can do remote radiology for, for locations where you don't have super specialists. You can do tele-ICUs and Apollo has shown that. So I think a large healthcare system can only grow if we adopt technology, if we say that the process is perfect and right. And the people behind it are so passionate about delivering quality. And I think that's really what has happened. And uh, as the Apollo team, as being part of the Apollo team, I can only say that we rededicate ourselves. We are committed to ourselves because really we don't do it for ourselves. We do it for the patients, for their families who trust us and who come to us. And we just have to do it day in and day out, 24 seven, and we have to do it right. I am proud to be an Indian, and I'm glad that India is showing the rest of the world the kind of work which is possible, and to be, again, the first in the world to achieve this standard makes us more doubly proud that we can do this and show the rest of the world that the highest standards of healthcare is within our own country. Thank you. God bless and Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, ma'am. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's time I call upon the visionary, the, the legendary Padma Vibhushan, Dr. Reddy Garu, to address the gathering with a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. The father of the modern healthcare system. Hadi, Hadi, welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Namaste. First, I acknowledge the great certification that we have from uh, certificate one three one three one one three one in 2021, and that makes it automatically reflects the basic values of Apollo when we created it. When we created Apollo, I said we must bring good healthcare standards for our people. When I came back from US, there, I'm a cardiologist, there was no acceptable cardiac surgery program in the country. And um, I used to send the so-called powerful, the rich people and the politicians 
to my good friend, Dr. Dendrit Gouley in Houston, Fazairi. In 1979, a person was supposed to be operated in October. I lost him on November 9th. You know why? Leaving, he left behind a 31-year-old wife, four-year-old daughter, two-year-old son, absolutely stunned. You know why? He couldn't raise $50,000. I, I said, how many more are going to die just because they can't have this kind of money? So this is where I think, I thought to myself, if Indian doctors, Indian scientists, Indian engineers are par excellence overseas, why not to do it here? Because it was not easy. Because healthcare was not considered, not even, even a, a pawn shop could get a loan from the bank, but the hospitals could not get a loan. So in any way, I thank all the, the government, the staff, everybody, to brought in, helped us to bring in this type of care for our country. And in the last three decades, I'm very proud to say that more than 150 countries, people come to India for care. You know why? We've excelled in four Cs. Our clinical excellence is second to none. Being a cardiologist, as I said, I did this because there was no cardiac surgery program in the country. Cleveland Clinic, Denton Coolies, and the Cleveland Clinic for our head on the light. Today, we are number one in the world. And, and in medicine, of course, uh, uh, our Srivatsa will laugh at me and say, what is your talking about numbers? Today, it's all about quality. We gave you a certificate for your highest quality. So in healthcare, it's not numbers, it's the quality. But in that, it's not, we are not only number one in uh, cardiac surgery, where our outcomes are better than the best centers anywhere in the world. Our first year survivors are better than best in the world. Our, uh, you know, in infection rates, I give you a small example. But again, it takes me back to my village. I come from a small village. We do a program, we adopted 60,000 people from first breath to the last breath. In that, many things we do for them to kiss, to stay well, and to, to keep their mind, uh, to keep them he healthy and happy. One of the things that they are, one of our doctor teams have done is 400, Neat bilateral knee transplants they have done without a single infection rate in a 60 bed primary hospital. So this is, this is the motto of Apollo. Whatever we do, the quality should be on the top. Not the quality better than the next, next door, not better quality in the country, but we should be on the top of the world. That's how we brought JCI. That's why we created uh, NAVH. And in, in all of this, and today, when we get this certification from BSI, I'm very proud that, again, it reminds us saying, you've done well, and you have kept up to your promise to saying that you will give the highest standards of care for yeah. your people and to the rest of the world. Because as I said, already 150 countries are coming to us and it will be much more. The, starting about this telemedicine, tele, tele I still recall in 2020, when Bill Clinton was coming to the city, suddenly we planned saying, why not we show him what we can do, uh, connecting people in the remote areas, especially in a remote village. Uh, I, as I said, my village is in, uh, in a holy uh, district, Tirupati. Chitur district, my village is Aragonda. So we connected Aragonda to the high-tech city. Uh, a patient, uh, a 13 year old girl was being examined there through uh, echo, transmitted to one of our cardiologists in Apollo Hospital, Hyderabad, and then on to uh, the exhibition center. 
um, we were all prepared. Suddenly, the you know his program got a little delayed. He said, "I may not be able to come." His wife said, "Dad, you can't miss this. This is something you will love it." So, in any case, thanks God, he came and saw it, and he saw this young girl being examined there, and the doctor at Hyderabad told the mother of the child, saying, "Your child has got a hole in the heart." During vacation, send the child to us. We'll fix it up. She can reach, when school joins, she will, she can join or go back to school after the vacation. But he added another wonderful word. She will lead a normal life. She has ran out of Bill Clinton's eyes. And then he said, I, we still have that picture. And he said, Dr. Reddy, this is a very, very, very wonderful thing that you've done. The rest of the world should follow your lead so that people in the remote places can get benefit of high-tech medicine. So why I'm trying to narrate this is, way back in 2020, our idea is not just to fulfill Chennai, to fulfill the healthcare needs of our country, but to see that we give the, the healthcare of higher standards to the remote parts of the world. And this is where I think telemedicine is playing a very significant role. And not just telemedicine playing a significant role, for it to get the highest quality standard. So I thank uh, um, our Professor Ganapati and uh, our young man, uh, Vikram, who has done all, and, and his whole team, who have done all of these, all of these years. It's not numbers. Numbers, yes, still we are only 30, 40 million people who have gotten access to this. But now we have created another one called the Apollo 24-7. Once Apollo 24-7 goes across the country and across the world, people around the world can anytime, night or day, pick up, pick up the phone and then say, I have, I think, a little bit pressure on my chest and a, a pain in the arm. Do you think this is a heart attack, we can, the doctor immediately will have another gadgets. Now there are a number of gadgets that are available. On spot, you can transmit it in ECG and is various parameters. And the doctor can immediately say, no, don't worry. Like what we have done for during pandemic, millions of people are so, so very happy. They were panicked in their house. When they had a little few symptoms, they didn't know whether it's COVID or not. They called our doctors. We gave free services for them. We would tell them, no, no, don't worry, you have, don't have COVID. But if the symptoms suggested, we said, no, you go to such and such a place, have a checkup done, a test done. And the test proved positive. Again, we made a new methodology of way of treating them. Because you can't put everybody in a hospital because you all knew every hospital was full. And India doesn't have enough, enough number of hospital beds. So we created a program called the Couch. In that Couch program, we have over 5,000 rooms, hotel rooms yes, across the country. So the first symptoms, if they're, if they're positive, and they had minimal symptoms, they are kept first in the hotel. My home care team looked after them. Our nurses looked after them. Our doctors gave the real strength to them by giving the telemedicine using the tele telehealth services. So I think this, we, in this manner, we manage, and uh, today the problem is not gone. At least we can face it if it recurs or in, any other such huge tragedy comes in. But we all know during this decade, World Economic Forum forecast today, UN held a for, uh, program for this. WHO constantly is demanding saying, 2020 to 2030, the world will face a huge problem with a thing called the non-communicable diseases. What are these? Diabetes, heart attack, strokes, cancer, and infection. But you know, in uh, heart attacks and strokes, I, I hope you all should remember this. It does not occur like in the uh, Caucasian population between 60 years and 80. I remember when in 1974, when I mentioned, I had seen about eight cases in 30s who had a heart attack. 
And I mentioned this in the US, they said, no, no, Indians don't know their date of birth. I said, don't be foolish. They not only know their date of birth, they know the star under which they are born. Now, later in 82, 80 years later, three or four doctors didn't get up from the duty room. All of them are Indians, all of them are in their 30s. Then hell broke out that, uh, you know, that in Indians have heart attack in very early because they eat a lot of ghee. I said, don't be foolish on ghee uh, or coconut oil, so on and so forth. Now we know there are 10 risk factors for heart attack. The most significant is the genetic factor. And this genetic factor, they say, came because a few hundred years ago, there is a famine. During that famine, Asia was affected. And that's why the genetic transmission took place. And so we should be more aware. Because why I'm concentrating on this is, who are these people, 30s and 40s? They are the soul of the home. You know, they are the pleasure. They are the earners of the family. And they are the people who are driving the GDP. So I think this study medicine will be, make a very significant impact. Whenever they have, they have the slightest symptoms, they can call us. And we have made throughout our, the country, we have made all our ambulance. The first ambulance service, 1066, came first in this country by Apollo about 20 years ago. You know, so we made, we made this, all ambulances free for them. The moment a call comes in from them, that's why tele, they, you know, our uh, tele services will make a significant impact. And if the doctor, uh, our central command station receives saying it's an emergency, the ambulance is sent no charges. For any emergencies, whether a heart emergency or a stroke or a medical or surgical emergency or a trauma, we don't charge on the, on the ambulance fees. We bring them because why ambulance? He might have a beautiful car, but by the time he gets his driver and comes home, or comes to the hospital, still about 10, 15, 20 minutes are lost. When our ambulance goes there, the treatment starts right then, that second. This is where it's very important. But all these are being connected to the telehealth services. So this is where I think telehealth services is going to make a very significant, we already made a very, very significant difference. Our 24 into seven will bring this back by hopefully in the next few months all over India. So far 30 million I'm used. I hope 300 million will use very, very in the next year or two. But our intention is not India because we all belong to the same humankind. Our intention is to see what can we do for the rest of the world. The first thing I've told my government is saying, Indian doctors, Indian hospitals today are as good as anywhere in the world. So Indian can become the global healthcare destination. You know, what we need is to use the applications and bring more all of these. So I just want to say hearty congratulations to Dr. Ganapati, all, all of them for bringing this press. But my most grateful thanks to BSI and to Pankaj uh, to say thank you. Thank you for recognizing this because this gives us added strength because our goals are just there now. But our goal is to be there, you know, to cover the rest of the world. And we will do it. When I say we, please don't think it's just Apollo. It is going to be India. You know, Apollo cannot take care of our India. Apollo cannot take care of the rest of the world. And my last, this one is, there is a lot of concern for people saying, what, what happens to all of the people in the, in, the, in, the, in the cities? There are a lot of hospitals that are happening. What happens to the villages? I think the answer is telehealth. The telehealth already, we are doing many, many uh, uh, centers in the villages. Government of India gave us 60,000 villages on a single day. Uh, first, we had them some problem because there are not only 14 languages in India, there are probably 140 spoken languages. So we had that problem. I think Apple so, uh, solved that problem for us in translating it. So we are serving those, those people. So I, I, I strongly believe that 
encouragement like this from BSI, giving us this certificate 13131, will give us an added strength and saying, saying, we are now on our way. Now it's no longer walking. We need to step up or fly to cover the humanity because the most important thing all of us want is good health, happiness, and then comes wealth. And all three in there will have. God bless. Requesting all of you to please be seated. Uh, Anna, photographs ki time on the Anna. We have time for photographs. Sir already chala sip ninchinaru, so let's not trouble him. <laughs> <laughs> Hari sir, please take away your mask. <laughs> so, uh, as everybody have uh, stood up, uh, may I uh, present you all? We will proceed for the certificate presentation by Mr. Pankaj Srivastavji on behalf of BSI to Apollo's honorary dignitaries. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment. Now is the moment. We are witnessing the world's first organization to receive ISO 13131 certificate for health informatics, telehealth services. Yet again, another benchmark by Apollo. We had many firsts in the past, but this is remarkable. Another first and many more firsts to come our way in our caps. Congratulations, congratulating Dr. Reddy Garu for, for his vision, for his real interest work. we are now witnessing the entire team behind making this a uh, successful making this the greatest journey the world has ever achieved ladies and gentlemen if you all could applaud for the applaud for the entire team that was behind telehealth services from illness to wellness to the remotest area possible apollo has made it possible and that is why we are witnessing the world first organization to receive this remarkable certification by ISO 13131. It's time to make a toast by the entire team of Apollo, congratulating each and every person who has worked behind this successful 
Jani. Well, Thank you. I'm finally glad the media gave some time for Dr. Eddie to please be seated. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, requesting all of you to please be seated as we are going to acknowledge the leaders, the exemplary leaders who have contributed behind this field of telehealth services. Yeah, ma'am. Sure. May I request Mr. Vikramji to hand over the souvenir to the beloved chairman for being the visionary in telehealth services. Requesting Vikramji to hand over souvenir for Padma Vibhushan, the visionary, the father of modern health care system. So congratulations, hearty congratulations on embarking this benchmark. Today we have set a standard and there are many more first to come, but let's not miss applauding for this auspicious occasion for this wonderful milestone to Apollo becoming the world's first organization to receive the certificate of ISO 13131 for its services in health informatics, telehealth services, and planning guidelines. Quality planning. Yeah, sure. Requesting Mr. Vikramji to hand over the souvenir to Dr. Sangeeta for being evangelist in telehealth. Yeah, sure. May I uh, invite Professor Ganapati to conclude the session with a vote of thanks. Can you switch on that, please? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. You will forgive me if I become a little emotional at this point. It was in 1998 when, can I have the first slide, please? As uh, Secretary of the Neurological Society of India, I had the audacity purely inspired by Dr. Reddy. I thought if in 1980, he could decide a corporate hospital could be formed in India. I had the audacity to suggest to the Association of Rural Surgeons of India that would you like to use telemedicine? Obviously, we are too far ahead of the time. Uh, two years later, I think thanks to the efforts of Sangeeta, ISRO had decided to put up a VSAT at Aragonda, again, the world's first VSAT hospital. I just want to spend 500 seconds in trying to put you into a time machine, take you back and see the fantastic achievement of Vikram Tapru and his team of Premanand and others, Aisha, over the last couple of years has been built on the past. And here you can see in 2007, we held the first international conference in Chennai, 350 from India, 50 from overseas. What to me is still remarkable is the fact, I mean, today it looks silly. My grandson ridicules this photograph. He says, uh, I can uh, do a multi-point video conferencing on my smartphone. But believe me, for a hospital, for a hospital to encourage, and sir, I'm eternally grateful to you, sir, and to all of you, for a hospital to encourage uh, video conferencing in neurosurgery with Japan, Saudi Arabia, Hong Kong, United States, etc. In fact, I remember we even got the consul general to come. 2001, the world was totally different. It's very difficult for you to imagine. And uh, Apollo Hospitals was asked to participate in a conference. The previous speaker was Bill Gates, and I was so excited. But after his talk, he went away, so he didn't listen to my talk. But then that was, that was what was happening. And uh, Dr. Kasturi Rangan, the then chairman, has publicly acknowledged several times that ISRO got into telemedicine in a big way, purely because of the demonstration which we put up in February 
January 2002, where for the first time from the Shar Isro Center, we showed a telecardiology, a teleneurology consultation and so on. And again, for about three to four years, I don't remember exactly when, probably between 2008 and 2010, the number of visitors we had was incredible. The Prime Minister of Mauritius, the President, the First Lady from Uganda, and the Prime President of Uganda, and so many delegations from all over the world literally came to see what we are doing. Again, Madam, thanks to Sangeeta, who's, who suggested that we should start a course. I so vividly remember in 2003, we started for the first time in South Asia, a telehealth technology course with a very renowned Anna University. Unfortunately, after five batches, I had to discontinue the course because we just couldn't give sufficient placements. I mean, these photographs speak for themselves. We were evangelizing telemedicine everywhere and all over, not only in India, but all over the world. And I was very happy when Harvard Business School selected, of course, selected Apollo Hospitals as an institution to recognize for MBA mentoring and the telemedicine department was recognized. And then several six executive MBA students were mentored. They came to India and you can see the chairman handing over a certificate. Similarly, we had MBA students from the most prestigious American universities and the Indian universities. Columbia University showed it as global best practices and so on. Pan-African e-network, we were in the steering committee, the Government of India, Ministry of External Affairs took our advice, and for almost 11 years, we ran this project. Again, thanks to Sangeeta Reddy's initiative, we started a conference, the THIT, Transforming Healthcare with Information Technology in 2011. We hope to resume it next year. And for 10 years, this became a landmark among all uh, information technology digital health conferences. Uh, March 24th, the day when Bill Clinton formally commissioned the world's first, that was celebrated as IMA National Telemedicine Day for several years. We hope to do it. I would like to spend one minute on this slide. I think, sir, it is remarkable that a corporate hospital, and I've done enough uh, verification for this, validation for this, to the best of my knowledge, no telemedicine department in any academic university in this part of the world has published so many papers, written chapters and textbooks, etc., etc., etc. This speaks for itself. I think for a corporate hospital, this is absolutely remarkable. At this stage, I remember what Dr. Reddy told me 18 years ago. You told me, sir, Ganapati, your job is to make the pie bigger automatically your share of the pie will become bigger. It is so vivid in my memory. And I think this is the most important thing. Never, never did the leadership of, uh, of, the, tele, of the Apollo Hospital for a telehealth division, never did they even think of a monopoly. They said, you spread telemedicine, evangelize telemedicine, let telemedicine get into the public domain. And today we are the leaders in telehealth and today's even proves that show. Xerox copies can never be as good as the original. And to me, the greatest happiness is ATHS has set the ball mark. And today there are at least a hundred telemedicine departments in this country following in the footsteps of Dr. Reddy, the first corporate hospital. Today, I'm sure there are at least 200 Apollo-like hospitals. And I think this is his greatest achievement, not the Apollo hospitals per se. These are just some cover pictures. Two sup supplementary editions were brought out. We even have ventured, it is my dream, that in my lifetime, that telemedicine goes outside the earth extraterrestrial neurosciences. We have brought out a special publication. And please look on the top right-hand side. Apollo Telemedicine Networking Foundation articles, as per Google Scholar, has been cited more than 200 times. I do not think even a university in India has achieved this. I'm talking of telehealth alone. Has been downloaded 45,000 times. One single article was downloaded 17,000 times, distribution of neurologists and neurosurgeons in the adoption of telemedicine. And most important, Columbia University brought out a book and there's an entire chapter devoted to 80 telemedicine services applied by India, including interviews with the chairman and others. I think academically, we have certainly done very well. And this is entirely because of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole atmosphere was so wonderful. I just can't imagine in a corporate hospital hospital doing exactly what one would normally do in a university. We have always tried to emulate you, sir. We have tried to be future ready. Several years ago, I did a one-day conference on drones. Never in my, I really never thought
thought that Vikram Tapu and his colleagues under the leadership of Sangeeta would actually make this a reality. I have been an armchair theoretician, uh, 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 an evangelist. I've been trying to say that, this, this, but I must concede that the next generation who have taken over have implemented and operationalized all my dreams. Uh, the white tire on my head very clearly shows that I'm getting into the emeritus category, but I think it's a fantastic job they've all done and I want to place on record once more. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 21 years since we embarked on telehealth. Our universe has changed. We should not strive to achieve world class. The world should strive to achieve India class. <laughs> Apollo hospitals should not follow higher standards. Apollo hospitals, I repeat, should not follow high standards. They should set them. And I think we have already started doing this, and this is the future. My favorite phrase, which the chairman has mentioned several times, geography becoming history is very well known. Today, the creating awareness was what we did for the last two decades. Today, it's time that we talk about compliance, adherence, regulations, rules, limits. And I can't see a better thing than the ISO 13131 standards. Raise the bar. I think that is the most important thing. Do not be content with what you have. Be future ready. Dream, dream, dream. And one day, your dreams will become a reality. And most important, the last uh, several lectures I've been giving the last one year, I am a little concerned that technology may overtake the humane nature. And uh, Mrs. Preeta Reddy has mentioned several times, which I repeat, Madam, TLC, tender loving care, I think a doctor's responsibility is to wipe the tears of the patient and it can be done virtually today. So please get into the mind of the beneficiary, understand what the beneficiary wants and then practice telehealth. Do technology is only a means to achieve an end and not an end by itself. A fool with a tool is still a fool. And I think this is very, very important. Trust. Unless the beneficiary trusts you, telemedicine will not go on in this thing. Uh, 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 can I give the vote of thanks also now? Yes, Do I continue with the vote of thanks? Okay. The vote of thanks is a ritual normally, a formality where everybody says, you know, in spite of his busy schedule, he is able to spare a few minutes, etc., etc. I am being a very unconventional and I have some idea of systems and processes. I have some idea of what it takes to get a certification. There is no compromise at all so far as the methodology is concerned by the ISO or the BSI. And this would never have taken place but for hundreds and hundreds of man hours, woman hours being spent to achieve this. Of course, this would never have taken place without you, sir, and with all the, with the vice chairperson, the joint managing director, without all of you, Anupam Sibal, and the, the president of the hospital's division, every one of you, without your blessings, this would not have taken place at all. The, it is impossible to mention the name of each and every one. And you'll pardon me for reading it out because I have not personally interacted with the BIS team. But I understand, of course, that Mr. Pankaj Srivastava, who is physically with us here today, you represent the, your entire organization. And of course, specifically, the people who have been dealing with this is Mrs. Maureen, uh, Courtney Salisbury, Harold Pradal, pro, forgive me if I pronounced it uh, incorrectly, Angus Metcalfe, Vasudeva Murthy, and many, many others from the BSI team. And um, as I said, people unwept, unhonored, and unsung. Some of us are sitting on the stage, but we are here because those who are not on the stage have done all the work. And you know, you take the credit. It, it is entirely teamwork. There is no I in team. Together, everyone achieves more. That is the acronym for team. There is no I in team at all. So the vote of thanks. I think there are many, many people. And please consider this as our sincere gratitude to every one of you who made this possible. And I'm also, I'm already dreaming of a new certification, which probably will occur five years later, 10 years later. And certainly we will be the first, not on the earth, but in outer space, because I believe with space tourism developing, I hope in my, if not in my lifetime, my children will definitely see an Apollo telemedicine unit outside the earth. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I overlooked Mr. Tune Scott say on behalf of the BSI, he has played a very major part in this. Thank you, thank you once again.
Thank you very much, Professor Ganapati, for such wonderful insights into the telemedicine and telehealth services. And now, uh, may I request our beloved chairman, Dr. Reddy Garu, to hand over the souvenir to Professor Ganapati for being the torchbearer in telehealth. Requesting uh, the chairman to present the souvenir to Professor Ganapati for being the torchbearer in telehealth. What an incredible moment. And now may I request our beloved chairman to present the seminar to Mr. Vikram for being the missionary in telehealth. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Vikram Thaplu. Thank you, thank you, sir. And may I request Mr. Vikram to hand over the seminar to Dr. Sangeeta. And with that, it's fine. Huh? Yeah, sure. Yes. Requesting all of you to please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the house is now open for Q&A. We also have physical media and virtual media joining here. Firstly, we'll, uh, we'll take up the virtual media. Any two questions from the virtual media, please? Yeah, Professor Ganapati also thanks the virtual audience. I request you to paste your questions in the chat box. Okay, we have a question from Shine Jacob. Maybe some of these research other organizations in the world having this experience. How does it exist for you? Uh, can you, Jadeep? Uh, this is a bit of a tricky question at this point of time, but the best of the knowledge BSI has, uh, as of today, uh, Apollo happens to be the only organization. Um, there have been precedents of companies who were certified to the previous standard, but for this new standard, BSI can very clearly inform you that Apollo has achieved that certification. Yeah, uh, could we, thank you very much for addressing that question, Mr. Pankaj. Uh, could we attend the second question from Shine Jacob, the business standard mentioned about the tie up with Malaysia and plans for Africa and countries like Bangladesh. He wants to know the details of ATH global expansion plans and whether ATH is looking for partners in this regard including Africa and Bangladesh that was mentioned. Also, where would you like to see the reach of Apollo Telehealth after five years in terms of healthcare centers, teleclinics and touch points and the investment that would go into it? Over to you, ma'am. Okay, so thank you, Shine, for that uh, really interesting question. Like I mentioned, Malaysia was one of the first governments which came forward and gave us their rural clinics, much on the pattern of many of the Indian state governments. So we're currently doing uh, telehealth, primarily focused on telepsychiatry uh, in these clinics. We are looking at various other non-government tie-ups. We currently have over 18 international clinics, which are extremely active. But in terms of just teleconsult, we get teleconsults from over... 117 countries on a one-to-one -one basis. So I can just say that there is no limit. And Dr. Ganapati showed you that we can even go beyond the globe uh, into space when uh, passengers are traveling. We've also tied up with airlines for uh, in-air patient emergency care. Uh, I was actually physically present when one of our doctors did, uh, you know, a help. And from that time, we do tele-ECG, we have tie up with different airlines. So really the sky is the limit, telehealth will be, and now the sky is no longer the limit according to Dr. Ganapati. So telehealth will be extremely pervasive. We will hold questions on uh, investments because we don't want any forward uh, kind of looking uh, statements on that one. But let me just say that wherever patients need us, wherever people need us, we will be there. 
Thank you, ma'am, for answering that question. And uh, Mr. Kumar Sharma has joined here and he wants to ask his question verbally. Mr. Kumar, could you unmute yourself and ask your question? Yeah, very simply, actually, thank you so much. I think congratulations on a major milestone for the Apollo group, actually. Uh, we've been tracking your, your developments right from the stage. There used to be the, the Apollo Reach Initiative, setting up villages in Patna and all, uh, in, in various locations, having hospitals there. Does this herald a change in terms of your model fundamentally and leveraging more on tele rather than actually a physical presence? Second bit, three bits are there. Second is, uh, how will you handle tele radiology and others like Doppler, for instance, without a local presence? So if not, uh, other than tele, tele consult, will there be like a local service provider connection that this model will have? And finally, this is congratulations that this being the first certification. What do you think is stopping, let's say, a Cleveland Clinic or a John, John Hopkins from opting for these three bits? Thanks. So, so Kumar, uh, let me just say that telehealth will be used by consumers directly. And our consumer-facing format is Apollo 24-7, where consumers can now do teleconsults and do e-commerce. And very soon, uh, we will have connected devices and further monitoring, like we already do cardiac assessments. You know there are various applications for that. Uh, in the advanced care, telepathology, EICU, video consults, second opinion, teleradiology are all services which come under the advanced telehealth, which is a B2B or a service provider to Apollo. And here we already have multiple connections in this front where, like I told you, we're managing today over 200 ICU beds which are outside of an Apollo hospitals. So these formats will continue to grow, teleradiology as well. On the uh, echo machine, again, a very good question. And this is where the uh, certification becomes critical because the standard of transmission is very important. The intervention and the quality of the bandwidth. So uh, we are very committed to using the highest standards, ensuring a quality transmission, uh, putting in a standard electronic health record and therefore giving a very good thing. I think Dr. Ganapati wants to answer that one uh, in further detail. Your, the third part of your question uh, is something that I'll get back to after Dr. Ganapati answers this. Doctor, you wanted to add something. Uh, sorry, just a technical clarification regarding Doppler. It's a very good question. One of the advantages of remote healthcare is a qualified radiologist can tele-monitor, can tele-mentor. So we do have technicians i mean um, who can be who can do the doppler in a real time being uh, controlled real time by a radiologist located hundreds of miles away so i tell the radiographer i tell the technician that you angulate use a five frequency transducer change it to 7.5 do a little carotid artery flow here is still not good i can hear the sound and as angita just now mentioned because of the quality that i have seen some of this myself both echo and doppler the quality of the sound which you hear on a headphone 5,000 miles away is not only not different from if it's face-to-face, uh, -face, it's even better because the signal-noise ratio is totally eliminated. You hear only the gush of blood flowing from the atrium into the ventricle. So this is what modern technology is all about. You do not need a radiologist to do a Doppler. A radiologist can hand hold hands virtually with a less than optimally yes, and, and while it's beyond the scope of the question let me say that we clearly had that vision and that is why chairman set up a separate we company called medskill to take on many of these roles so we also have telemedicine technicians we have radiology technicians and we're training our own echo technicians to be able to do this remotely the last part of your question, what's stopping Cleveland from doing this? Nobody's stopping anyone from doing this, but we believe that India has a significant advantage. And that advantage is high quality human resources at cost effective prices. So it's important for us to have the aspirations to conquer the globe. And that's why chairman said a young India will be taking care of a graying world. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I request everybody to please put your put yourself on mute so you don't disturb. Uh, Ma'am, Mr. Yeah. 
ఫైవ్ థౌసండ్ కావాలి మీకు Ms. Kalyani's uh, question. Okay. I'll just take a question from Mrs. Kalyani of Express Healthcare. What is the current acceptance of the rate of telehealth in Indian healthcare? Madam, honestly, it is impossible to give you exact numbers, percentage figures. India is such a diversified country. But I can tell you with absolute confidence and authority that the acceptance rate has multiplied at least 10 to 15 fold. If 10 people are accepting it earlier on, now almost 60, 70 people are accepting it. Now, I also want to add that during COVID, 67% of clinicians using telehealth were first-time users. Wow. So telehealth has clearly accelerated the acceptance, the usage, and the proliferation of this powerful technology. Uh, also, I think it's a very similar type thing from Nivedita Das of India TV. Uh, so for a heli telehealth service to be successful, what are the most important steps healthcare providers need to take? And conversely, what are the biggest risks? I think the most important step is, besides having the passion and the commitment, is to invest in the technology, the people, the training, the systems. And that's what today's certification is about. Yeah. It's about ensuring that you've put all these in place to offer a risk-free service as high as possible. Nothing in healthcare can be completely 100%. However, you do every step that you can to give the patient the best. And this is what today is about. This is what this certification is about. And, and, Thank you. And what lessons of peak in COVID time is kind of getting to a new normal. Right. So if, if it led to a spike. Very well said. Yeah. So very well said. What Pankaj said was what led to a peak during COVID times is now becoming the new normal. Yeah. And like it was in the McKinsey last report, that we cannot ever expect to go back to pre-COVID levels on telehealth. This will become the new normal. Thank you very much for answering in, in detail. And uh, may I request Mr. Tunes, Kodze? Chairman will now make one closing yeah, remark. Yeah, sure, and sure, then sure, sure. First, as I said, we're all happy that uh, this certification we gives us that little more strength saying that uh, telehealth services will serve people. As I said, not just in India. It should be, we'll serve India, we'll serve the world. Yeah. Even in healthcare, as I said, India will become global healthcare destination because of our four Cs which I've described. So similarly, I think we will maintain quality all the time. So for the certification clearly recognizes saying that that's our focus. Whatever we do, we must be able to do the best that with the things that are available at that time. Yeah. Newer and newer technologies are available for us. AI, data matrix, all of these. All of this will help us to reach people from all over the world. God bless. Thank you. Can you all give it up for the legendary, the visionary, Dr. Reddy? Thank you all very much. Ma'am, one moment. Uh, yeah. Mr. Thune Skodze, the regional managing director from uh, BSI, has uh, joined us. We'll ask him to uh, have a word. Mr. Thune is connected with us virtually. Chairman uh, <clears throat> uh, Reddy, I trust that you can hear me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, honored guest, uh, Chairman Reddy, it was inspiring to listen to you. Um, good afternoon. I have a great pleasure to announce that you have now achieved um, ISO 13131. Congratulations to the top management team in fulfilling this requirements. The project was extremely ambitious and took a lot of effort and dedication on your part. In BSI, we believe that standards are the DNA of civilization. Without our ability to design and accept standards, we would never have developed into such a complex society. Standards drive learning. Standards make comparison possible. Standards fuel creativity. This is an excellent achievement. On behalf of the chairman of the BSI Board of Directors, 
Dr. John Hurst, congratulations to Apollo Telehealth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tunes. Uh, let's open the house for the physical media here. We have taken the questions from the virtual media. Just two questions and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Actually, I have a question to Dr. Sangeeta Reddy. She'll be back in a moment, sir. Any other question? Use the mic, please. So how many patients you touch till uh, through this teleconsultancy services by Apollo? So there is a, uh, in the AV, it was presented 13.5 million. 13.5 million till it started, right? right? So per day, an average, how many? Tele so we do close to 20,000 plus uh, transactions. As Ms. Sangeeta said, 24,000 to be precise. That's what the numbers are. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes, we'll wait a moment for Dr. Sangeeta and take the last question and then wrap up the show. Yeah, sure, sir. Yeah, okay. In the meanwhile, can I quickly ask a question? Yeah, sure, yes. please. I'm, uh, I'm Balu Pulipaka from Deccan Chronicle. Uh, with respect to telemedicine, I understand uh, what you talked about data transmission. And uh, so is Apollo also working in terms of uh, with, with uh, companies that enable the data transmission for you? to ensure that you actually have that kind of a compressed uh, data, whether in terms of an image or a voice or a sound. How, what, what, what are you doing in, to ensure that the information that comes from the remotest part where you're connected to comes in a good quality, usable quality? Thank you. So I think I'll take that question. So primarily, we have developed a platform on our own and we have a full-fledged engineering team which does the work. So the platform is available on the other side. As, as Dr. Sangeeta said, there are two formats. One is B2C, that consumer can use it directly. They don't need to really send those uh, medical compressed details. But in a B2B environment, I think the platform does the work. So it is at an international standard, whether from a security standpoint, whether from a compression standpoint, we have the world-class thing. Cool. Um, so uh, we have the last media question to you, ma'am, and then we are wrapping up the show. So, uh, sir, over to you. Uh, you're saying about uh, market size. It's huh. uh, 38 billion in India or no, this across is the global, global market size. Any India figures that you can. I, I'll give it to you. I'll okay. send it to you. And what is the market share? Pre uh, of so, India? see, much of this is uh, unorganized, unrecorded because we're not sure about the providers or the services. So it's difficult to assess market size at this point of time. In a way, we feel it's good because telehealth is becoming an integral part of overall telemedicine. And much of the global market estimates are based on service providers uh, or on the technology companies. Thank you. Thank you very much. With that, we are wrapping the session. I request all of you to stand up and please clap for this auspicious occasion. A benchmark that we have set today, Apollo being the world's first organization in witnessing and being certified ISO 13131 for health informatics, telehealth services, and for quality planning guidelines. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up as much as you can. And congratulating each and every person who is behind this achievement. We have achieved a lot of firsts and now another first. And in future, there are going to be a lot of firsts. We are going to set all the benchmarks. Ladies and gentlemen, for Apollo Telehealth. Let's have a group, group photograph. The entire team. Finally, the moment has come to raise the toast and to celebrate yet again another benchmark.
the world's first organization to receive ISO 13131. From illness to wellness, to quality over quantity, Apollo has always been number one and will continue to provide its services to the remotest areas, to the remotest people, and it will continue to deliver the quality services as it has been doing. Could we all applaud for the chairman himself, the visionary behind this benchmark? राम सिंह हिंदू गांव पर रहने वाला हूं मैं मैं एक किसान हूं जी खेतीबाड़ी का काम करता हूं इट्स क्वाइट एन अमेजिंग एक्सपीरियंस बीइंग कनेक्टेड टू पीपल लिविंग थाउजेंड्स ऑफ किलोमीटर्स अवे एट अ हाइट ऑफ अराउंड 14000 फीट फॉर द सोल पर्पस ऑफ बीइंग देयर एट द टाइम्स ऑफ देयर डायर नीड पांच बजे उठ के चले जाते हैं खेतों में काम करने Ladies and gentlemen, now the house is open for the lunch. Requesting each and every guest here to please have the lunch and leave. Thanking the press, the media, and everybody who has connected with us virtually and physically, and to our event team also for putting this show together. Thank you very much. Signing off, your show host Sharmila Kasala, Jai Hind. अपने गाँव के नजदीक डॉक्टर ने बताया की बोला के जाओ आपको वहाँ उन्होंने टीबी के थ्रू जो बड़े डॉक्टर से वो बात करवा के आपका ट्रीटमेंट करवाएंगे फिर यहाँ ले आया जी कहला मैं यहाँ आज मेरे को पता नहीं उसके बाद मेरे को पूरा याद भी नहीं था जी राम सिंह पेशेंट आए थे वो फॉर पी एम अराउंड आए थे और उनका कंप्लेंट था कि चेस्ट पेन था और जो कि लेफ्ट शोल्डर की ओर रेडिएट हो रहा था यहाँ लाया तो जी इन्होंने पूछा मेरे को बोला क्या हुआ है क्या कैसा है मैं कहा यार मेरे को तो कोई वो ही नहीं है बुरी तरह दर्द हो रहे हैं कोई पता नहीं है मुझे या मैं बच जाऊंगा कि नहीं मुश्किल बहुत ही मुश्किल है उनको देखते ही लगा था कि उनको इमरजेंसी की ज़रूरत है तो मैंने इमीजिएटली डॉक्टर ह्यूबर्ट के साथ चेन्नई में इमरजेंसी में कनेक्ट करवाया था तो उन्होंने ई लेने के लिए कहा था फर्स्ट ई लिया था वो नॉर्मल था तो मुझे लगा था कि पेशेंट को डिस्चार्ज कर देंगे बट फ्रॉम माई एक्सपीरियंस इन द पास्ट I knew something had to be wrong. This gentleman was particularly looking very uncomfortable. Acha, aisa ji, mera chaati mein dard ho raha tha ji. Chaati mein saans band ho rahe the. Main bilkul hi saans to aisa soch raha tha ki main khatam hi ho jaunga abhi. He kept him in the tele emergency unit and closely monitored him for next 45 minutes. A repeat ECG after that showed an acute inferior wall myocardial infarction. एवरी फाइव मिनट्स उनके ईसीजी और वाइटल्स में डॉक्टर ह्यूबर्ट को चेन्नई में वाया इंटरनेट सेंड कर रही थी वी वेयर ट्रैकिंग हार्ट अटैक इन रियल टाइम विद द मिनिमल फैसिलिटीज अवेलेबल एट कीलोंग वी टुक अ डिसीजन टू स्टेबलाइज हिम इन द टेली इमरजेंसी यूनिट इटसेल्फ एंड वी स्टार्टेड थ्रोम्बोलाइसिस आई आस्क्ड देम टू एडमिनिस्टर स्ट्रेप्टोकाइनिस व्हाइल आई वाज देयर ऑनलाइन थ्रूआउट द ग्रुवलिंग टू आवर्स विद द पेशेंट बाय 6:45 इन द इवनिंग आई एडवाइज देम ट्रांसफर द पेशेंट अक्रॉस टू कुलू फॉर फर्दर मैनेजमेंट द हायर गवर्नमेंट फैसिलिटी उसके हिसाब से मेरा जान बच गया जी उस उन डॉक्टरों का मैं तो बहुत मैं भगवान से दुआ करता हूँ बहुत इनका भला हो अच्छा हो इनको ऐसा ही स्टेबल सैटेलाइट कनेक्शन एंड प्रेजेंस ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस डॉक्टर्स ऑनलाइन ओवर हियर हैव हेल्प सेव मोर देन 140 सिमिलर इमरजेंसी केसेस द लास्ट सेवन मंथ्स 
that's the power of telehealth